Everybody, welcome. Got a request uh, for a more inclusive tutorial, like a little bit more detailed tutorial on the Cracks add-on. And so I'll go over that and just go ahead and drop in a cube and I'll bring that over and let's just, uh, let's see, let's GZ1 enter, done. I like that on the grid line. Now, all you got to do for this is understand there's two different things going on here. You have the make cuts area, which is going to give you a drop down menu when you click this. And that's going to start down here at the resolution of the cuts. And this little area is what you would work with to modify it. But you don't really have to do too much. I've got it preset. It just comes in low resolution so it doesn't crash you out. I may change that in the next version, but if you click reset default values and then turn this off because this is technically vor noise and we don't want that uh, unless that's what you specifically want, but the noise will be good enough and it's going to put the resolution higher and things like that. So I could just go 75 and it's going to make the cracks look a little bit better. You can move the cracks around. Just remember this is simulation based. So you're going to need your timeline up and you can scrub through the timeline, but you can't do it until you change your frames. So this would be set to like 250 or whatever. So you've got to bring it down to something like 35 and then select your object. And we could just save this with an arbitrary name. And then this will come alive and you'll be able to bake it. And now that you've got the bake ready, and if you just like everything that's here, you can maybe bring that up one little tick. But is the more noise you bring, uh, the more it's going to, longer it's gonna take to be a little bit more, because it is a bake, so it's just gonna take longer. So don't worry about this, this is all for the plane. All of this other stuff right here, this is all for the level one damage and all the different types of the images that you can use for distortion that's all for the plane when you add a sub d plane uh, you can the check fragments really wasn't meant uh, to be used in this instance it can be used to say realign because it's more of like a scale elements node that's behind it so you don't really need to mess with it too much you do have a sub d here and a subdivide here it's different don't use them together and the cutter size can be used to bring it down if you want. And it's something, I'll show you the cutter, actually, once we bake this. So I'm just going to set the frame rate here to 35 and click Bake. And it should be pretty quick. But I'll pause the video anyways. All right, so that's done. And now that the purple bar is all the way down here at the bottom, we can simply scrub through the timeline and get some cracks. Now... Notice these aren't necessarily going to be everywhere. may not be everywhere you want them. So in order to kind of move them around, you can move these values over here, but you'll have to delete your bake. So you could delete the bake, and then you could conceptually move these cracks around. It's a little bit slow with the resolution so high, so I'll go down to something like 10. And then I can kind of move the cracks where I want them to appear. And then I can bring the resolution back up. It doesn't have to be that high. You can bring it to 50. That should be good. And I am going to reset this. And anytime you click the reset, you can just turn any one of these on and off. And that was the cutter actually just there. Uh, the cutter's invisible to the actual render and everything else. So if you like what you've got, then you can uh, go forward with it. So I may just change my noise a little bit. Yeah, see, it cleans up the shading. So you just got to play with it. It's a very, very powerful add-on, but you just got to get used to it. So you really don't need, just, just use what I'm using here. And all of that is good. So now I can go ahead and bake. And with the lower settings, it's going to actually bake out much faster and that's good for prototyping. So when you're ready, you could delete that, 
go to 100. I've only got it set to 100 because if you go over that, I've found in my uh, debugging of the add-on and just the geo nodes that are behind it in the first place, it causes like a, a lot of crashiness, if you will. And you can kind of get somewhere where you don't have like, yeah, you don't have anything kind of clipping. Uh, you can do this over and over, by the way. So if I apply these cuts, you know, I can actually cut this again if I want to. And that looks pretty good. So what we can do now is just click separate parts. And then you've got these uh, loose pieces right here, which you could add physics to these if you want. Uh, you can add active and passive rigid body physics right here. And that will definitely, I'll just click on the physics tab here. That'll definitely take a little bit of extra knowledge, you know, to get that. You know, these buttons do work. Now, if I wanted to, say, select all these loose parts, and I think this scene right here would probably end up in that. So if I select add parts to collection, it's going to automatically make me a loose parts collection, which is pretty cool. So I'll be able to, and let me make sure that actually went in. No, it didn't go in for some reason. Let me see. I just want to delete that. Hit A for all. Yeah, okay. So I just didn't have it all selected. So anyways, this works with the physics. So if you were to right click here and select all objects, you can apply those different things uh, to the rigid body. Whatever you want to do with it. And so that's pretty basic but it gives you a pretty powerful way to add cracks to things and then you know you actually have real loose parts. So if you get rid of all that, you can come back and add a subdivided plane. And if we go into face select, you'll see it's been subdivided. I think something in the neighborhood of like 30 times. It's, it's a good little mount. And this is an orphan purge. This is for the previous version. You don't really have to worry about that. Um, but just in case, it's Good. And this is a sub D modifier. So if I want to add a sub D to this, it'll automatically do it. But I don't have any noise attached to it yet. So what I can do is I can go over here and add a blend, the clouds, all kind of stuff. Uh, let's just add the Voronai. And if you add the Voronai, I made it very, very automatic. So it's a lot easier than it used to be. Uh, this is actually pretty cool because it's going to give you a lot of different factors right here on the add-on so you don't have to go searching for anything and so you can just kind of play around with these figure out what you want to do with it now i can add the sub d and i would say make sure that stays at the bottom so it doesn't look funky dunky like that that's not too bad and then what you can do is you can actually assign this okay i can add a group to this <clears throat> and within the add-on you just go in here and just select group and the group doesn't have anything, right? So if you come in to your vertex area here, and press T to grab my T panel. And I like the circle select. So I can just kind of come in, circle select some stuff. And now I want to assign that. So I'll click the assign, go back to my tweak tool come back out and now this is all set up right I got a nice little mountain range with its own uh, parameters for controlling it which is I think gonna be pretty useful so then if I wanted to I can also come over here and add voila another uh, setup so it's like an insta terrain creator it's very cool and you'll see the crush it clouds marble all these different things and if one is kind of like overlapping the other, whatever is looking a little weird, you kind of dial it back a little bit. And then of course the uh, sub D can be brought up to clean that up. And you can stack layers, you can stack vertex groups, you can keep adding them. Uh, you can refresh or rather remove all the vertex groups. Be careful with that one. You can just apply all the modifiers right here. It's very easy. This is a very quick little terrain creator for you. And so I think the, with these options right here and then stacking them with vertex groups you could literally just have a, a massive amount of things you can do and uh, yeah that's about it uh, not too complicated 
If there are any questions, hit me up in the comments. This is on Blender Market. You can grab this. I think it's only like $3, $4, whatever I have it at. Uh, pretty easy to deal with. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Smash that subscribe, smash that like button. See you guys in the next tutorial.